Welcome to the first review video from the organic chemistry section of the MCAT review series I'm putting together. Before you watch this video, please take the quiz that's in the description to determine how much time you should spend on this video in order to optimize your studying. And also, please download the flashcard set in the description that goes along with this chapter. That way you can study after you watch the video and retain the information because there is a lot of information to go over. This video is about nomenclature, and by the end of the video, we'll name this molecule, we'll discuss priorities of all the different functional groups, and we'll just generally talk about how the MCAT wants you to name things, and what specifically is even covered so that you don't go learning a bunch of stuff you don't need. So let's get right into the video. Whenever you're naming any compound, you should go through these three steps, and I'm gonna talk through them, and then use those steps on this molecule right here. So step one, find the longest carbon chain with the highest functional group, highest priority functional group on that chain. Step two, you're gonna actually go ahead and number that chain. And that sounds pretty straightforward, but there's a little bit of nuance that I'm gonna go over. Step three, you're gonna number the substituents and then you just put the name together. It's pretty straightforward. So let's apply that to this molecule right here. What is the longest carbon chain? Well, it's probably this one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. But remember, you gotta have the highest order functional group on the longest chain. So even though this is technically the longest chain, the alcohol is not on that chain. So you would have to use a shorter carbon chain that has the alcohol. So that'd be one, two, three, four, right? Wrong, because you want the alcohol to have the lowest possible number. So you're actually gonna start from this carbon. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we've identified the longest chain and we numbered the chain. Now we just need to identify the substituents. So we've got this substituent right here and this substituent right here. So let's number them. We've got one, two, and then we've got this group right here, which you're just gonna need to be able to identify. And there's gonna be a lot of stuff like that that's just memorization that comes down to the flashcards, you know, recognizing functional groups, knowing the priority of different functional groups. That's gonna come down to the flashcards. All right, so let's see, this has two carbons. So what is the name of that? Ethyl. And we've got this right here. So what do you think this is? Isopropyl. We put that together, we get three ethyl, two isopropyl butanol. And basically we're just alphabetizing this. So we got A, B, C, D, E, E comes before I. The numbers are not what determine the order here. It's gonna actually be alphabetical right there. So if that seemed a little bit much, you should stick around for the rest of the video where I go into detail about all the different functional groups, all the different priorities, and all this other stuff. If that seemed like a breeze and you did well on the quiz at the beginning of the video, you could probably just skip this and, and do the flashcards, okay? But now we're gonna get into a little more detail with some of the other nuance in nomenclature. Now I'm gonna talk about each different functional group and how to name them, and we're gonna start with alkanes. So each carbon chain length has an associated name with it. So we're gonna have methane for one carbon, ethane for two carbons, etc. And one thing to note here is that once you get to pentane and above, it's Greek roots. So you don't really need to memorize that. It's just gonna be pentane, hexane, heptane, and that's really all you need to know for that. But what if you wanna name something with a double bond? You're just gonna take the A here, so propane, ethane, butane, and turn it into an E. So then you have propene, or ethene, if this was a double bond. And you could do that for all of these. You just take the A, turn it into an E. If you have a triple bond, then it's gonna, then it's gonna be propine. So you're just gonna take the A or the E or whatever, and make it a Y. So propine, ethyne, butane, and that would just go for everything. If you would like to number one of these chains, you're gonna number it like you always would, giving the highest priority group the lowest number, counting this way instead of this way. But there's a little bit of a problem, right? The double bond spans two carbons. So is it one propine or two propine? Well, the answer to that question is it's one propine and it will always be the lower number. That's just something you have to memorize and it will be in the flashcards. Now we're gonna talk about alcohols. If you're naming an alkane that has an alcohol on it, so we'll use pentane, 
and we will make it an alcohol. How are you gonna name it? Well, you're gonna do what we always do with those three steps. First, we're gonna number it. So we're gonna start here. It's got five carbons, so it's gonna be pentane, but it's got an alcohol, so we have to change the ending. So how do we do that? We're gonna take the E, get rid of it, so drop the E, and add pen to get rid of the E, O. So you're adding O-L at the end of it, and you can do this for any of these. You're gonna number it, and then you're gonna drop the E and add O. That's all there is to it. If it's not the highest priority functional group, you're gonna say hydroxy. And we'll get into that at the end when I talk about all the different priorities to functional groups, and we'll look at some molecules that have two different functional groups, and one of them is higher priority. So we'll do that at the end. Now we're gonna talk about aldehydes, and I've written out all of the aldehydes you're gonna to need to know the common name for. That's gonna be formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, and propanaldehyde. We're also gonna talk about generally naming any aldehyde, and we're gonna use these as an example. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do the steps we always do. You're gonna count the number of carbons, one carbon. What do you call a carbon chain with one carbon? Methane. And if it's an aldehyde, it's a similar process to alcohols. So you have methane. Okay, methane. Then you're going to take the E, drop it. Methanal. So you drop the E and you add an AL at the end of it. It's pretty straightforward. So this would be methanol, this would be ethanol, this would be propanol. One thing you might want to start memorizing is the pKa values of all these functional groups. The pKa of an aldehyde in general is going to be around 17. Obviously, it depends on the things in the molecule specifically. This is just something good to know. It's good to know for biochemistry and some solubility questions that might be on the MCAT. And same thing for an alcohol. You might want to know that the pKa is going to be around 15, 16. Kind of, and you can base that off water, right? Because water, pKa, what's the pKa of water? About 14. And alcohol is kind of like a water molecule, right? I mean, it's got that same functional group, the OH. So you can always base it on that. Just one thing to note here before we move on to ketones is that an aldehyde is this part of the molecule. So it's going to be a double bond to an O and then an H. And then the rest of the molecule doesn't really matter. You know, whatever's over here, this is still going to be an aldehyde as the functional group. So I just wanted to point that out because unlike an alcohol where it's just an OH, you know, the aldehyde is a little bit of a more complex carbonyl based functional group. Now I'm going to go over ketones and a ketone is basically just a carbonyl group in the middle of the carbon chain. An aldehyde is a carbonyl group at the end of a carbon chain. And there's not much else to say, so I'm just going to name a couple of them. So we'll start with this one, and feel free to pause the video and try to name it for yourself before I do. We're gonna count in this direction. And that's so that like always we have the lower number for the highest priority group. So we have two, and then this would be pentane, but it's a ketone. So what do we do? We're gonna drop the E at the end and add own. So from pentane to pentanone. Pentanone. Cool, now we have this one. And this is the first one I've really given you guys that has two functional groups. It's got a alkene and a ketone. And I'll just tell you that the, the ketone is higher priority than the alkene. So with that in mind, why don't you pause the video, try to name this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and name it now. So we're gonna count in this direction. Oops. And now we're just gonna go ahead and name it. So the higher priority group is the ketone and lower priority group is the alkene. We're still gonna keep the ending though. So we're gonna have it be four pentene two ohm. And you can name this in a couple ways, but that's just the way I chose right now. At the end, we're gonna do more problems like this. So don't get too stressed if this didn't work, didn't really um, click with you because we're gonna do a bunch more questions like that where there's multiple functional groups at the end of the video once I've covered all the functional groups. Next up, we've got esters and these resemble carboxylic acids, except there's gonna be an alkoxy group instead of that OH that's on a carboxylic acid. And an alkoxy group is just a carbon and then an O and then an R group coming off of that. 
I've got a couple examples here, and these are a little more tricky to name the esters. Basically, you're gonna have a chain here, you know, cut before, that's gonna be this R group, and then a second R group here. And those are both gonna factor into the name. So here you can see, so I'm gonna underline this part. There's two carbons there, right? So it's ethane. That's where the first part of the name comes from. So ethyl is coming from here, and then butanoate, so butane, that's coming from here. And that's because we've got four carbons here. One, two, three, four, right? I mean, you're, you count this carbon, so. So that's where this one comes from. And then here to illustrate that, I only changed this. So now it's methyl, because it's one carbon, butanoate. If you were to remove a carbon from here, so say you, got, say you take this and you erase it, what do you think the name would be? Take a moment, pause the video. It's gonna be methyl, and then we've got now three carbons, so three carbon chain, that's gonna be propane. So methyl propanoate for that, if you were to change this. So this would then be propanoate. These are a little more tricky, but just practice a few of them. I'll include some practice problems, and there will be flashcards as well, so, so don't stress too much, just practice these. All right, so here we're gonna have another carboxylic acid derivative. So that's gonna be this part of the molecule, and it's called an amid. Basically, you're gonna have the hydroxyl group, which was, right, we had, for carboxylic acids, we had this. The hydroxyl group, that's this part, is replaced with a nitrogen-based compound right here, so an N. And when we're naming these, just like with a lot of the other ones, you're gonna drop the E and add something, and in this case, you're gonna add a mid. So let's start with this one. We count three carbons. What's the name gonna be for that? Propane. Okay, propane. Now we have to drop the E and add a mid. So it's gonna be what? It's gonna be propanamid. And now we gotta add the substituents. We've got a two carbon substituent and a one carbon substituent. And whenever we have alkanes that are substituents, we drop the E and add YL. So this is going to be ethyl. And this is going to be methyl. So we're going to add those on here now. And when you're dealing with amids, the way you do this is you put N and then you put dash and you write the uh, substituent. So we're going to have N ethyl and methyl. N-ethyl, N-methyl, propanamid. Boom, we're done with that one. Now let's try this one. I want you guys to try it on your own and then I will go over it. All right, so we're gonna number it again. We've got one, two, so that's gonna be ethane, but we have to drop the E and make it eth and amid. Two substituents again, and they're both one carbon, so I'm methyl, but they're the same thing. So it's not actually going to be N-methyl, N-methyl, ethanamide. It's going to be N, comma, N, dimethyl, ethanamide. So if you have two of the same thing, you're going to do N, comma, N, di, whatever it is, and then the ending part. There will be some practice problems in the description for this as well, and there will be flashcards. So don't worry if this seems tricky, there's plenty of practice for you. Next up, we're gonna do anhydrides, which is the last carboxylic acid derivative. And then we'll go over some examples with multiple functional groups and do a quick summary. All right, so now we're gonna talk about anhydrides. And an anhydride is just two carboxylic acids minus the water molecule. So there is one that you're gonna to wanna to know the common name for that is acetic anhydride. But just in general, how do you name these? Well you're gonna recognize the carboxylic acids that are making it up. Then you're gonna drop acid and add anhydride. So what can we see here? Well, we've got two right here, two carboxylic acid molecules that combine minus water to make the anhydride. If we were to make it back into a carboxylic acid, could you name this? Try to say the common name and try to also just regularly name it. And we'll tie that back into the common name for the anhydride and the regular name. So pause it, try to do that. What would this be? Well, it's got two carbons. The common name is gonna be acetic acid and the regular name would be 
ethanoic acid. So, if we were trying to find the common name here, we would do ethanoic, and then there would be acid, but we'll drop the acid and put anhydride. And you see acetic anhydride is the common name, and this is coming from acetic acid, so that should make sense as well. In this case, we had two of the same carboxylic acid. What happens when there's two different carboxylic acids? Well, then we're gonna have two different names. So we're gonna try to have to figure out what each of these carboxylic acids would be called. So take a moment, try to name both of these carboxylic acids. Can you name them? So we've got another two carbon one. So that's gonna be ethanoic acid, right? We know that. This one, three carbons. What's that? Propanoic acid. So if we were gonna name this, what would we do? Well, we would say ethanoic, propanoic, anhydride. So basically right here, you're just taking it as if it was a substituent, alphabetizing it, so ethanoic, propanoic, and then get rid of the acids, put anhydride. There will be practice problems for these as well in the description, but this is just a quick basic overview. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. Now I'm just gonna do a summary of all the stuff we talked about. We've got all of the different functional groups in order of priority, so carboxylic acid, highest priority, alkane, lowest priority. But there is one important thing to note here, and that is that alkenes and alkynes are considered to be tied for priority, except in the case of cyclic compounds. In cyclic compounds, alkenes are higher priority. So that's just one subtlety to note here. And I've got the prefixes and suffixes. So if it's the highest priority group on a molecule, it's always going to be the suffix changer. That's why when you have an alcohol, it ends in OL and not ane because the alkane is much lower priority. So keep that in mind when you're naming things. If it is a compound that has two different functional groups and one of them is higher priority, you're going to use the prefix on the one that's lower priority. So keep this in mind. I would recommend memorizing this chart. And now we're gonna go over to this practice problem I have over here. And we're gonna be using the steps I outlined at the beginning of the video in combination with this big chart here. So first of all, we gotta number the carbon chain and we gotta do so in a way that incorporates the highest priority functional group, which is pretty straightforward. I mean, all the carbon chain uh, ways of counting are gonna include this carboxylic acid. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four. And notice I counted this way because a carboxylic acid is higher priority than a ketone. We can see that on our chart here. So now that we've counted, we're gonna have to create the parent chain name. So we've got a four carbon molecule. So what is that gonna be? That's butane, but carboxylic acid. So it's gonna be butanoic acid. That is our parent chain name, suffix change or whatever, but we have some substituents. What do we have? We've got this group right here and this group right here. So what do you think those are? Well, we've got a ketone and we've got a methyl group. So the ketone, if we look at our chart here, ketone, oxo or keto, but typically oxo. So in this case, we're gonna have uh, oxo, two oxo, and we're gonna have methyl, right? Note here, right? We've got for alkanes, it's gonna be the parent chain YL. So like it's an alkyl group, but you know, it's gonna be methyl for all intents and purposes. So now that we're actually, we've got all the substituents named, we've got the parent chain name, we just gotta put this together and we're gonna do it alphabetically. So we know M comes before O in the alphabet, so it's going to be three methyl, two oxo, butanoic acid. So there we go. We named one with multiple different priorities. There'll be some more practice questions if you want to work on this on your own. And like I said, all the resources will be in the description. So make sure to check that out.